Good evening, Twitch. Hello, viewers on YouTube, and welcome to Birth of a World. So, on tonight's program, we're going to be taking a dungeon that was designed last week, um, the Tin Cliff Ice Cave, and we're going to be populating it with a horde of orcs. Um, but first, so here's the um, rough map that we drew last week, um, just quit the quick drawing, basically. Uh, in between weeks, I did a bit of my homework here, and I went and vectorized it. So here now, <coughs> excuse me, uh, here now we have the proper version of the, of the map after I've taken the, I took the line drawing that, we, that I did uh, last week and vectorized it. So now we've got this here, and I think it's looking pretty damn nice. But we've got a problem here. We have a lovely bit of terrain, but we don't have any monsters in it yet. So on tonight's stream, for those of you joining us, we're going to be creating a pack of orcs who are going to inhabit this uh, the built-up area kind of over here, this kind of area, the built-up area, as well as selecting a couple monsters to use for the non-built-up area. Basically, how this dungeon works, there's three paths through it. <coughs> They're all going to be roughly the same duration of time, so regardless of what path the players choose to take through here, um, the dungeon should take about the same amount of time, but the experience will be radically different. Now there's a few reasons for doing this, but primarily it's because uh, I like my players to feel like they're kind of in control of what's going on, and also to let them have the kind of feeling, okay, what did we miss if we went this way? <coughs> so um, a bit of explanation about this map. Uh, Basically, the, pl the players are coming from the town of Tincliff, which is located at the foot of a valley. Up the valley, there's this... Uh, it's in the mountains, and it's wintertime, so it's icy. Up the valley, there's this cavern where uh, orcs have been raiding the village uh, and taking captives and loot. And so the party are being sent up here now to go uh, basically clear this cave out, having proven themselves in the first adventure, um, which was uh, covered in the previous streams. You can go watch that on YouTube. Um... Once they get here, they get this fork, and they get to choose, they get to, do they follow the less built-up path, or do they continue this way and go into the built-up area? The less built-up path has a pair of monster encounters in these kind of ice caves. Um, we've got some stalagmites and some pools of water and stuff like that here. The left side, and the far more interesting side we're going to spend time on today, uh, has two possible paths through it, either through a bunch of traps and past a mage, or th right up through the actual living area where the orcs are, <coughs> Um, past a few ha past a few guards, and then through this kind of area where there's one orc patrolling and guarding the area, and the sounds of battle will then call in his friends, and we'll get into this kind of real messy, hopefully, chain battle. Uh, there's a chance that they'll find the secret door and let them pass between these two paths and potentially have a longer experience. Regardless of what path they choose, they wind up in the ice cavern at the back here, where there is our important capti uh, captive who is important to the storyline, uh, which we'll cover later, uh, and a large battle um, with a boss and possibly a few minions uh, in this kind of ice cavern room. Uh, note on the map, I do use hexes uh, for my gameplay instead of normal squares. Uh, it's because I kind of like not having to deal with half squares, and I like uh, spherical spell effects to actually be more round. They're hexagonal, but they're still more round. Uh, things like that. Um, another bit here we've got, so, locked wooden door, open wooden door, open metal door, and I don't actually have any locked metal, uh, oh yeah, locked metal door, there we go, with the lockpick DCs written right on them. Uh, this is probably about as polished as my maps ever get, and I'll be using this format for future maps created on the stream. So let's dive into it, eh, shall we? So, you might notice the challenge rating here is are kind of high for orcs, right? Orcs are, a standard orc is a CR of one half. Um, <coughs> not exactly a challenge for a party of roughly fifth level adventurers that we're aiming this at. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some orcs with personality. Uh, we've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight orcs to create uh, with varying uh, amounts of levels. And how we're going to make them more challenging is in addition to having them double and triple up, uh, we're going to give them a few uh, levels of player character classes. <coughs> Generally speaking, uh, adding a player character class uh, will up the b enemy's challenge rating by one point per, by one level per um, point per level in the class. Uh, for the ones that are in the main area, I'm reaching at my screen here, but I should be pointing at the mouse. For the ones in the main area here, since we've got to have four of them, that's already going to up the challenge rating for the encounter quite a bit, because it's going to be a big fight. <coughs> so 
So we might, instead of giving them player character class ranks, um, give them ranks in an NPC class. So if, for those of you playing the home game, uh, we're going to be using the 5th edition Monster Manual and 5th edition Player's Handbook uh, to go through the creation with these. In my previous streams, I know I've used... Uh, I know I've used the Pathfinder uh, system reference document, but uh, as advertised, this whole campaign that I'm building is for 5th edition, and so we'll be using 5th edition here. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, cut over to the spreadsheet here. Uh, there we go. So I've gotten this spreadsheet up in Google Docs, and all this will be shared uh, later on by way of my blog, which is linked under the video stream. If you're on Twitch or on YouTube, it'll be under the stream or in the description. Uh, I've put up the stats for the basic orc here from the Monster Manual, and basically we're going to be taking this guy and augmenting him with levels of a player character class. Now, it's tempting to just say, oh, let's give them all you know a few levels in Fighter and call it a day, but I want this pack of orcs to have a bit more personality to them. Excuse me, I'm trying to stay hydrated here. I'm getting over a cold. So uh, once we figure out exactly who's going to be the more experienced members of the orc of this uh, orcish horde, we can decide uh, exactly what uh, their personality traits are and maybe write some notes. I'm going to actually <coughs> make a little field here to note personality. Uh, let's start with uh, the ones we're probably going to encounter first. So we've got two guys here, and they're going to be... Uh, we've got two guys here, and they're going to be basically just chatting amongst themselves in Orcish. Uh, the idea being player characters will be able to hear them from probably up about here, uh, and that talking will draw them into this area, and if they're stealthy, you'll be able to sneak in and have a nice sneak attack opportunity. Defeating these two orcs will allow you to loot this set of crates. Um, another bit about my map format here is the gold text indicates that an object contains loot. Uh, and usually it's pretty obvious what the loot's for because there'll be an encounter nearby. So we've got these two here, two fighters talking, which is going to be challenge rating four. So uh, in standard tradition, uh, having two creatures in an encounter generally means the challenge rating will be... Uh, <coughs> That of the monst that of the monsters uh, plus two. <coughs> um, this is going from my Pathfinder experience. So just a second, while I see if the monster manual has that detail, or if I should really be going through the Dungeon Master's Guide, which I don't think is out yet. Yeah, it does not really saying. So I'm just going to go with what I know, and we can adjust it later if we need to. So. Uh, we're going to give them all names, but for now we're just going to call them uh, by their encounters. So encounter A, number one, A2. The challenge rating is four. We've got two monsters there. So four, um, two monsters adds two to the challenge rating. So each of these guys. Um, <coughs> uh, is going to be a challenge rating of two. Uh, so that will probably result in us having a uh, orc with three levels, um, if I'm doing that right. I think that's right. So we have an orc with three levels here. The next encounter, let's see, the next encounter we'll stat out is probably, uh, I'm going to leave the traps for later. But let's set out this mage dude here. We've got an orcish mage, and he's going to be challenge rating five uh, Possibly by himself or with some friends. I'm thinking maybe we'll give him another orc alongside him to uh, help with that. So that's going to be... The mage will be CR3. And his guarding uh, is going to be a CR2. Because that way the mage is a bigger threat. Uh, which is important. Uh, okay. Back over. Uh, last, so the last big fight we've got now, we've got this big fight here. We've got the patrolling guard, we've got the blacksmith at his forge here, and we've got two orcs chilling in the canteen. Uh, so we've got patroller, and uh, 
B1 and B2. And we said that the challenge rating on this would be a 6 or 7. So uh, we're going with 4 enemies, which is going to mean the challenge rating is going to be levels plus like uh, plus 5, is it? I think here. 2, 3, 4. Yeah, so plus 5. So that, again, will give us a nice challenge rating of about 2. Uh, for the majority, isn't it? I think I'm going to make the patroller a bit bigger and the blacksmith a bit smaller. So let's make him three, the blacksmith's one, and these guys are more basic orcs with two. <coughs> um, I can adjust these later on uh, once I've got my hands on a DMG <coughs> to verify they're still kind of doing challenge ratings the same way. So think about doing this when I don't have all the books for this edition yet. We're kind of, kind of improvised based on what I know from Pathfinder. Uh, lastly, we've got the Chieftain. The Chieftain fight... Wrong window. The Chieftain fights a CR7, and again, we probably want a boss plus a couple minions. So that's going to be a three-participant fight, um, which means it's challenge rating plus three. So the boss is going to be CR4... Uh, and uh, give him at least one minion, that'll be another CR2. Uh, possibly another one. We can always do the, pull the trick of having one guy in our back pocket that we can pull out later on if we want to. So let's t talk about these first guys here. What's their role in this orcish horde that we've got dealing on? Uh, I'm open to suggestions, anyone who's in chat here. This is an interactive stream after all. So if you've got an idea for an orc, um, an orc NPC that you uh, think would be an interesting guy, keep in mind that these guys are probably just going to get massacred by the player characters. This is only the second dungeon of the campaign, and we don't want to really massacre our players just yet. Uh. <coughs> so like this first encounter here is pretty easy. You've got two orcs. You're going to take them unawares. Um, they're standing guard outside some swag. We'll probably give them levels in fighter, uh, but we do want to mix it up a bit. So I think maybe like for these basic guys, we'll probably give them levels in fighter. And then we're, when we're inside here, we'll mix it up a bit. Maybe like one of these guys has a few levels in cleric. So when we get into the middle of this fight, uh, we'll have an orc come out and he's going to help heal, maybe, instead of uh, going in and attacking. Things like that. Now we've got, you know, basically an adventuring party versus what amounts to a four-man party of orcs. Unless you're really stealthy and you kill this guy and then you wind up fighting just maybe a fighter plus a cleric over here. Indoor Seeker suggests an orc messenger from another orc group. Offers an opening for an additional side quest. I like that, Indoor Seeker. Line Art suggests an orc that uses a chain as its weapon. Cool, we'll look into that when we go uh, building up their stats. Let's take some notes. So I think the idea that the messenger, they're probably not going to let the messenger from another orc camp uh, into their base. So maybe uh, A1 here, he's going to be our messenger. Uh, <coughs> um, so yeah, we'll say A1's our messenger. I like the idea of a bit of a chain weapon. Chains are interesting uh, as a combat mechanic, so maybe that will be one of the ones. Uh, actually, you know what we'll do, Line Art? I like your chain suggestion here. Let's have the blacksmith, uh, maybe he grabs a ch you know, he just grabs a chain that, he, that he's got lying around and goes out and fights with that. I like the, I think I like the sound of that, but no, let's do one of the guys in the canteen. I'm thinking like maybe the cook grabs a meat hook or something like that and goes at them. So I'm going to note that one of the guys there is a cook, and he goes at him with, a, with basically a meat hook, but it happens to be, you know, a chain weapon that he's actually proficient with. How does that sound, chat? Um, so for our messenger dude, we're going to basically build these guys um, as one would build a player character, only faster, basically. Um, So, uh, yeah, that's the basic orc book. So we're going to build these guys like you would build a player character. 
I'm feeling like the messenger, maybe, uh, if he's a messenger, then he's traveling, so maybe he's going to be a ranger uh, instead of being a fighter. And then we've got an actual guard out front who is a fighter. Uh, so let's produce some stats for this guy here. Generally speaking, I want to work off of the, rather than like rolling completely fresh stats, uh, I want to work off the kind of stat spread that the orc already has and just shuffle points around a bit. <coughs> so we basically, we want to take the, <coughs> we want to take a look at the basic orc stats and figure out, uh, I don't think they give us racial adjustments in the monster manual. I'm just going to check here quickly. Gibbering Mouter. P. Orc. Do they give us racial modifiers so that we can make orc characters? Uh, no, that's a shame. I always liked it when the monster manual would do that. Okay. So we're going to take a look at the basic orc here and kind of dissect what its racial stats will be so that we can figure out what uh, the number spread was, and then we can assign stuff. <coughs> Let's make a row here. Um, two 16s. So one of those is almost certainly a um, racial modifier, and I'm willing to bet, actually, that this is probably going to be... Uh, hold on. Whatever. I'm guessing it's 2, 2, minus 2 <coughs> as the racial modifiers for this guy. And so that would mean that what we actually want, what we actually have to work with for stats, <coughs> an option at least, is uh, 14, 12, 14, uh, 9, 11, and 10. That's what its raw stats would be. And so that I'm going to take that um, as what we want to work on here. Actually, I'm doing this wrong now. I know I'm doing this wrong already, because I happen to know that for 5th edition, as I recall, races, the races just have single bonuses now. Okay, here's what they have. They have a, a plus 2 to 1 stat. You see, I'm far too used to playing Pathfinder here. They have a plus 2 to 1 stat a plus one to another stat. And that's all, I think. And then maybe, do, 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 do. what is it for? So I'm guaranteed that at some point they're gonna, pu I guarantee at some point they're gonna publish a races book that tells you what the racial modifiers for a standard orc are. But failing that, yeah. So we actually want a plus two to one stat and plus one to another stat. So con, and strength, I'm guessing, because that way we get uh, 15, 14, <coughs> uh, and uh, the rest, so 12, 7, 11, 10. But then I'm betting, because of dark vision and uh, aggressive, these racial modifiers, I'm guessing that's where they get the minus from. So if they made that a minus 1, that would be an 8. That looks like a normal stat spread for a non-heroic NPC. Um, just going off experience here. Generally speaking, you're going to have like 8, 10. Uh, you're going to have one, at least one 8, probably about, about one 8, and nothing over 16 um, for a uh, non-heroic adventuring NPC. By non-heroic, I generally mean not a player character, not someone who's the center of action. So this looks more reasonable. Uh, so I'm going to go with that as our actual numbers to assign. So as uh, Indoor Seeker pointed out, our ranger here is totally going to give his high score to his dex. <coughs> so that will have his base be 15. Um, Rangers also benefit from a wisdom score. So I'm actually going to give a 14 into that. Um, and I'm going to put the 12 into charisma because he's a he's a messenger he's has to communicate so he can't be too uh, gruff totally gonna make in the dump stat still um, so we have a uh, 11 and a 10 to assign so let's do 
11 and 10. So then we apply the racial modifiers. Did I do that right? 15, 12, 14, 8, 11, 10. Yeah, okay, good. Becomes a 12. Becomes a 12. What did I do? I did something wrong. That should... Oh, yeah. No, so that, that's right. That becomes a 12. That becomes a 7. Okay, and there's our uh, Ranger's core stats. <coughs> Let's... Uh, so he's going to keep dark vision of 60. And we'll have to figure out what his passive perception is. It's going to be higher because he has a much higher wisdom score. Let's pull up the stats um, for the ranger class. Uh, oh yeah, we're going to have aggressive because I think that's a racial ability. Well, it's on the basic standard orc, so I'm going to assume that's a racial ability. So at the very least, they're all going to have aggressive. So much so that I'm not going to bother. So they've all got that just off the get-go. Likewise, they've all got Dark Vision 60. Uh, they've all probably got Speed 30, but not necessarily, because I'm betting we're going to have one guy who walks around in plate armor and clanks about... Uh, like he owns the place. Okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 rogue. Ranger. <coughs> so for those of you playing the home game, we're on page 89 of the Player's Handbook. Uh, I want people to go ahead in chat, and if you have a Player's Handbook handy, feel free to pick a um, an archetype for this Ranger, because uh, let's see how many levels he's going to have. He's going to be CR2. So generally something with player character levels, that means um, they'll have one level over their CR. So that means it's going to be a third level ranger. So we've got three levels of ranger to work off of. So does that mean we get to pick an archetype? This is where my, yeah, third level we do get to pick a bit. We do get uh, an archetype kind of to figure out what we're going after. after. So uh, we can figure that one out. But let's, let's keep, try and keep pure to this messenger um, kind of notion. So this is a guy who spends long times out in the mountains, because remember we're in a mountainous terrain here, he spends a lot of time out by himself in the mountains um, exploring and hunting. Uh, HP is going to be 3d10. <coughs> this is a monster with player character levels, so we don't use the monster's uh, hit dice, we instead use the player character's hit dice. And his con is only plus one, so it's going to be 3d10 plus three. Um, which base, which will have an average value, uh, let's see here, 13 plus uh, 10, 23. <coughs> so how that works, right? Max first die and half on each subsequent die for the average value. Uh, speed's totally going to be 30 feet, because there's no way I'm putting this guy in heavy armor. In fact, he might even be faster uh, once we're done with him. Uh, what's his favorite enemy going to be? Chat, he lives in the mountains and he's a messenger. What's his favorite enemy going to be? I'm thinking giants, maybe? They're kind of known for being in the mountains. Um, or just generally beasts. I think we'll probably give him favorite enemy on beast. Let's do that. I'm going to have to refresh my page here because I'm not sure if chat can hear me. Or if I'm getting updates from chat because everything just kind of stopped. Hopefully nothing's wrong. Uh... So in the offense category, okay, now we're getting, now I'm seeing chat again. There we go. So Indoor Seeker says giants, Lineart says cliff birds. That's not the category, Lineart, but thanks for playing. Uh, let's see. Um, I think we're going to give him beasts just because he's living in fairly non-magical area. Um, so we'll give him beasts. Uh, So, favorite enemy beast gives us uh, 
advantage on survival. I'm just going to write down the... So I put it in the attacks box here because it's generally an offensive ability. Uh, that's just kind of how I work when I'm doing these tables for uh, quick building NPCs. Um, so yeah, favorite enemy beasts, and when, I, when it comes time to use this guy at the table, I will uh, have a note on what the favorite enemy actually does. But it gives you advantage on uh, wisdom checks to track uh, and recall information. And it actually, that's basically all it does, but I'm guessing there's more to it than that. <coughs> uh, we also get natural explorer as a ranger, which means uh, we pick an environment, in this case mountain, given... Uh, Oops, I put that in the wrong row. <coughs> uh, Natural Explorer Mountains, uh, which means he's not affected by difficult, ter by difficult terrain, um, can't get lost, a uh, bunch of other very useful things to do when you're living out in the wild. Good standard ranger abilities. Uh, Fighting style. What's a fighting? St what's going to be our fighting style for this orc ranger, who is a messenger? Trying to figure out if chat is working or not. Well, that's not good. I definitely am not seeing chat right now. Hold on, guys. Having a bit of technical difficulty here. Uh, well, I'm waiting for chat to hopefully reload. And if someone put a message in chat, just tell me if you can hear me and if everything's working. Um, Um, well, we're waiting for chat to catch up. Um, <coughs> just been saying, uh, all this stuff, this adventure, this dungeon, it's all going to be uh, available for download on my blog, linked under the video, uh, once it's ready. And it's all uh, Creative Commons 3.0, so you can use it all you want. The one condition is you have to give me credit. So you can say this is by uh, Rob Hicks or by at Too Many Knives on Twitter. Uh, and if you give me a tweet, I'll give you a shout out here on the stream. Um, additionally, for anyone who wants to find out uh, more about this setting and what's been going on, I've been releasing every week's video on YouTube. I think this is week 9 or 10 now of this series, and so you can go on YouTube and watch the creation from the very beginning uh, up till now. Okay, so chat, we're back caught up. Uh, how about fighting style? Any ideas? <coughs> Leaning towards archery, because he's in mountainous terrain. Um, but I'm going to wait to hear what chat has to say. I'm just going to write it archery for now. Oops. Unless I'm in the wrong window. Why are you not wrapping? I thought I told you to wrap text. Hold on. Cam has text wrap. There we go. Okay. Um... Skills generally don't matter so much, but uh, let's see. So he's going to have fighting style. He's going to have an archetype. <coughs> Ranger archetypes can take... Hunter or Beastmaster? I'm thinking Hunter. Yeah, this we're going to catch this guy out of his... Like I said, this is the first encounter here is a surprise encounter, and we're going to catch this guy with his pants down, so um, that'll be pretty cool. Uh, so I think I'll give him Hunter. So this is a guy who lives on his own. I think this is a good, good, start, good setup for... Uh, a good setup for a orc. So... Um, and we said this guy can be fighter three. <coughs> I 
I've only got an hour to do this stream and we're halfway through and we've only got like one and one half guys statted out. So let's uh, speed things up a bit here and start figuring out what the class levels of all these guys are going to be so that we can uh, have a better feel for what the orcs are. Let's also give this guy a name. I'm going to start giving these guys names. Uh, let's give them, I like like simple monosyllabic names I think for orcs. I mean I hate to be you know racist and say they're all dumb stupid beasts but uh, guess what? Uh, Rom and uh, 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 Nog. If anyone else wants to suggest monosyllabic names, um, feel free. We got our first two guys here. So you got Pit Walking on Rom and Nog playing cards up front. Seems very nice. The Mage. Uh, the Mage can be called. Oogie. This is fun. Uh, the mage. This is going to be a fourth level character. Uh, what are we thinking? Which caster class do you want to think, do you want to do for the, um, for the orc mage chat? It's going to be fought in a library. So that kind of says one of the more learned classes. Gronk. All right, I'm going to make the mage's guard be named Gronk. Done. <coughs> uh, we know that the, this guy's a scholar, or at least he likes books. Rug. <laughs> All right, Einart, we got Rug. Rug with two G's. Done. Um, I'm gonna name the blacksmith Bang. Just, just, just go completely, you know, it's like Bam Bam or something like that. It's completely in character. For anyone who's just joined the stream in the last half hour, this is an interactive podcast. Feel free to come in and make suggestions. We're naming orcs right now and figuring out what their classes are going to be. Uh, and then I'll probably build the stats in between before... Uh, I'll build, fill in the, all the stats before I release this and put it up for download. Um, so Bang uh, is our... our what do we got here? Gronk's the guard. Uh, what's the, what class is the scholar going to be? I'm thinking it, it, the scrolls say wizard, but at the same time he's an orc. Thinking, hmm, we got warlock to work from. Maybe we can do that. Page 105. Let's take a look at the warlock briefly and see what we can do for flavor for him. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Want to buy online resources so you don't just hear me flipping pages, seriously. Um, <coughs> uh, yeah, we're going to have a warlock. And I think he's going to have a fiend for his patron. Fourth level warlock. Fiend patron. So, for people who have been following the stream, you know that we've got uh, at the back of the dungeon we've got a demon who's posing as a captive villager, um, and is going to be important to the plot. I'm thinking maybe we can make him be kind of this this uh, this fiend. Uh, uh, so he's 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 uh, he uses the arch fiend. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, he's a patron of, he's, sorry. The Fiend is his patron. Um, so we have, a, we have a, a warlock associated with fiendish, a fiendish patron, and I think that gives us a nice kind of help tie in why this demon is here. You know, it was summoned by him, and maybe, he's, maybe this demon's now manipulating um, all of them through the warlock, who knows. Uh, Mage's Guard... I'm thinking we said this guy is basically going to be meat to block the, uh, to help the uh, warlock survive against the player character party. So I think he's definitely going to be a fighter. Um, he's going to be fighter three, and he's going to be heavy, more heavily armored, uh, so that he can make a good meat shield for that. Um, so Bang is our lowest member. Lowest member. He's a craftsman. Uh, I'll probably give him 
um, realistically, I would give him NPC class roles, but since I don't have NPC classes in front of me right now, PHP doesn't have them, right? Yeah, I didn't think so. So we don't have, uh, sadly, we don't have NPC uh, classes to work off of here. Um, otherwise, I would make him a few levels an expert. Um, so as it is, I'm probably just going to give him a uh, going to give him a skill monkey class. I'm probably going to make him a rogue too. So the rogue because they get lot they they're generally known as being skill monkeys, and he's got a crafting skill. So um, that's probably the closest analog to an to the expert that I can come up with. Make a note about his crafting skills. Um, Gronk's in heavy armor. Uh, let's keep going. Got bang. So we said this guy's gonna be Ferg. Sure. Ferg is the standard orc just chilling uh, in the mess hall and uh, who's gonna be pulled into the fight with the. Oh, we didn't do the patrolling guy yet. Shit, we should do the patrolling guy. Um, He's a level three, or he's CR three. He's a bigger guy. Um, I think maybe he can be like the captain fighter, like maybe uh, he's, he's the higher level. He's a, you know, like in charge of the other fighters. Give him four, and call him a captain. Maybe I'll give him um, a, a charisma bump. Give him a Note that Rug here has more charisma, and he's the captain of the uh, guards. Note for his skills, too, that he's got some skill in captaining. And, uh, and he's got better than others for better, better than other armor uh, and better weapons. <coughs> um, so the captain of the guards walking or forcing... forcing um, blah, 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 blah. The captain of the guard is pacing the hall outside the mess hall, basically patrolling in probably a very pompous way. Um, I like that. We're starting to get a bit of personality out of these guys, which is cool. Um, so, Bang. Yes, Bang is... Uh, bang is our blacksmith. Ferg is the other guy who's in there. Uh, can have Ferg be something different, too, if you wanted. Uh, oh, right, we said we were going to have a cleric. So we're going to have a... Uh, Leinart suggests for the captain, naming him Captain Porton. Captain Porton. Uh, okay, we'll do that. I'll take Rug's name and use it somewhere else. We'll do Rug over here. Rug's now the cook, apparently, because we said Ru that was the cook. Uh, so... Um, Ferg is going to be the uh, chaplain. Chaplain's going to be a cleric <coughs> of third level. Uh, he's going to probably have the highest wisdom than average, um, but he's going to have less armor. Um... So that's that. So Rug's the cook. Rug, uh, uh, let's look at the stats for a chain weapon quickly, since it was suggested by chat. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Equipment, venturing gear, weapons. Weapons. Uh, let's see, do we have chain on here? Wizards, I am disappointed. They do not have chain a stat block for chain on here. I'm gonna steal a stat block for chain flail from some other place then. Um, probably from Pathfinder. But I'll do that later. Key thing about the chain weapon is... Uh, the chain is generally can be used to trip people and has some reach to it. 
So basically, rug can stand back and whip it, whip it at people and try and grab their legs and stuff like that. It could be. This is turning actually into a very difficult fight. This block here, the actual the, the mess fight we're going to have if they walk into the center of the orc uh, house. This is going to be a rather difficult fight, and I love it. Because uh, the, one of the key things I like about my dungeons is having a bit of unexpected. So the players make choices, and those choices might get them killed. Um, but at the same time, the arrangement's logical, right? These guys are all, they all have their different jobs within this little family, this little encampment that we've got of orcs here. Uh, everyone's got a job, everyone's got something they have to do, and so that way it's all, it makes sense afterwards when you go and look at it in universe. It's just like, oh, okay, you know, we got the cook, the cook and the priest are in the, are in the mess chatting with each other while the captain of the guard patrols outside and the blacksmith hammers away, right? We've got our, the cook and the chef are in here, right? Got the captain of the guard walking around outside and we got the blacksmith at his forge. It's perfect. Nice, happy little family that are about to be massacred by murder hobos. Um, so the chieftain. <coughs> I want him to be a spellcaster too. In fact, I'm thinking he's going to be uh, also a warlock. Uh, he's a fifth level warlock. Also, patron of the fiend, and if we need reinforcement, we have a fighter three that we can bring in. We're going to characterize this guy C1 here the least, though, because he's a bonus. He's a bonus if the fight looks like it's going to be too easy for the player characters, which, seriously, after all they've fought, probably not. It's probably going to be a pretty tough dungeon, which is good, I think. Uh, got a lot of XP, good, nice, clean, bunch of nice, clean fights. And one incredibly, potentially very messy fight in the middle here. Uh, I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. Uh, let's talk about... So, we need a name for the chief. And no, you may not name him Thrall. Or Hellscream. Why? Because why? Um, in fact, I don't think anyone caught on to what I was going with, but... Uh, I don't think people caught on what I was going with with, Ra with naming the first two guys Ram and Nog, but that's okay. I'm naming the Chieftain Quark. Deal with it. Um, because one of the best things about DMing is just hidden, is just hiding references to stuff you like wherever you want to find, wherever you care to. <coughs> Part of the joy of DMing. Um, let's do their stat spreads for these guys. Uh, since that can be done before without having to peer through the class data a whole lot. So this guy's a fighter. I'm going to give him basically the stats. The fighters are going to get the standard, the basic orc stat spread because that is a decent fighter stat spread. Uh, which actually is this, not that. There we go. Uh, who else is the fighter three? You're a fighter. And then we maybe we'll shift these guys around a bit for a little flavor. Like maybe we can say... Uh, Gronk here. Maybe he's a bit smarter. Let's give him like a uh, let's give him a nine in intelligence. You know what? That's not going to really affect the battle at all. Let's do something. Let's make him slightly less tough. Let's give him a fourteen there, and give him a fourteen there. So he spent his points differently, uh, and as a result, he's more nimble. Uh, so he's going to be a, a a higher AC. Ah, yes. For anyone who's wondering, Quark, is there, Quark, Ram, and Nog are all Ferengi from Star Trek Deep, Deep Space Nine. And I like the names for using their names for orcs, so they're orcs now. <coughs> uh, captain. I feel like in an orc society, the captain is definitely got to be strong. Uh... Uh, uh, he'll be a bit smarter. Same rough wisdom. The key thing is he's going to be also a bit more charisma. Uh, he's already got an extra level going for him, or I might have given him a dexterity bump also to make him tougher. Uh, but since he's got an extra level over the other fighters, I think he'll be fine this way. 
Uh, plus, he's going to have a gear, advan a gear advantage, uh, which we shouldn't ignore. So, for instance, where the other guys might have non-masterwork weapons, he might have masterwork weapons or something like that. Maybe he's got a magic sword, even. I don't know how hard we want to make this. Uh, I'll work that detail out probably in between streams. I assume you can only listen to me talking at a text editor or spreadsheet for so long. Um, Bang is our blacksmith. Uh, I'm going to give him also let's do like I'm going to give him the same kind of higher deck stat spread. He's a crafter though also, so he's going to be above average intelligence and thick even for an orc, I think. Let's give him a stats block like that. So he's going to be, uh, you know, he's got the he's got the fine motor skills and the cleverness to make items, uh, to be a blacksmith. But he is not a person you want to hang out with, basically, because he's dull and thick. He's dull, dull as a rock and thick as a stone wall. There we go. Um. <coughs> so Ferg. Ferg's our chaplain. He's a cleric, which means he needs a wis He needs to actually put his highest score in wisdom. So uh, I'm going to do the stat spread thing again. Uh, Fifteen, twelve. Uh, I'm going to have him be really squishy. And that leaves my 11 and my 10. Because he's also going to be smarter. Because he's, you know, he's got to have some book smarts. So that gives us a 12, a 10, and a 9. Okay. So there's our there's our cleric. He's got a uh, radically different stat block from everyone else. But he is, you know, he's a man of the cloth or an orc of the cloth. Um, what exactly he is a cleric of, I'll figure out eventually. Uh, I usually don't use standard religions uh, in my own campaign settings. Um, but he will be a cleric of some orc deity, possibly like the patron of bandits or something like that. Uh, my other setting, Terra de Harb, one of the one of the lesser deities is actually, seriously, there is a saint of highwaymen, of, of bandits, that uh, and we might, I might import... Um, Alamaz, the highwayman, uh, into this setting as a convenient deity. When uh, I can work out this guy. I'm going to make a note there, actually. We're going to import Alamaz, the highwayman. Uh, the cook. It's another person who makes things, so he should probably um, be more clever. And uh, perhaps a bit... I don't know, we'll see. Uh, he's going to be clever. He's not going to be... I'm going give, to give him that, the 11 there. Uh, actually, no. Let's give the 11 there. Let's give him the... <coughs> uh, I think that... What did we say? Is we didn't actually work it as class yet, did we? Um, for class, again, this guy would be probably a, com a few levels of commoner or expert. Um, but lacking in that... Uh, I'm probably just going to give him... He shouldn't be a magic user. We've got enough of those now. I'm going to make him... I'm going to make him a ranger. Why not, right? Uh, he can be a different kind of ranger. Maybe a uh, like a defensive style ranger. Uh... uh Let's figure that out. So in that case, then, uh, give him the dex. I'm actually just going to give him our, range, our ranger's stat spread here. Uh, except I'm going to move the... Uh, that becomes an 11, and that becomes an 8. There we go. <coughs> Shuffle those around a bit. Uh, so now we've got our uh, ranger, who is a cook when he's not out hunting, maybe, or I don't know, he fights inside, maybe. Um, so who's next? We've got 
Uh, we've got Cork, of course, our chieftain. He's the toughest guy in the group, and I'm, that means he's probably going to have bigger stats than everyone else. Um, he's a warlock, which is a charisma-based... Uh, if I do recall my warlocks properly. Doop, 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 doop. Page 106. Doop, 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 doop. Yeah, charisma. He's going to be a charisma build one, so... I'm going to give him the... It works nicely, actually, for a leader, right, to be the character with high charisma. So, from that stat spread, I'm actually going to give him a 16 charisma. Mm -hmm. Yep, that happened. He's got 16 charisma. He's got bigger stats than other people. Basically, I'm going to make him buffed up a bit more. 16, 12. I feel like we can probably still dump intelligence as a stat. Yeah, I think so. So, he's going to... I'll put his low still there. So, that's going to be dropped to a 7. Um, Khan is going to be second highest uh, with the 14 which turns into a 16 with his racial bonus Dex don't really need it uh, can put his 10 there and that leaves me with a 12 which will turn into a uh, 13 in his strength category okay we have our stat blocks we have our core stats for these guys now so that's one complication done. Nick those two rows. <coughs> uh, we got about ten minutes left, so let's talk about uh, equipping these guys. Then I'm not gonna. Do, I'm gonna skip writing in all their class features and stuff like that. Uh, we can know roughly what they're going to be, so we can roughly pick their armor. Uh, so let's pull up the equipment section. Let's talk about armor. I think first. Tools. Where did armor go? I had the page here a second ago. I really did. Armor. There we go. Um, so I think our ranger, who's going to be on the move a lot, he doesn't want to be impeded, right, at all. Uh, we'll give him. Uh, he needs a higher. He needs some. He needs light armor, I think. So we're going to give him leather. Uh, he's going to have leather armor, which will put his AC at uh, 11 plus dex mod. Dex mod's plus 2, uh, so that will put, give him a nice 13 in leather armor. Uh, Nog is a fighter, but we said he's going to be one of the less equipped fighters. Um, that said, we'll put him in some medium armor. I'm thinking maybe a chain shirt would be nice. Uh, no, no, the standard one has hide armor, and maybe uh, let's go with a uh, chain shirt. Because again, we're we are advancing these guys, so they'll be a bigger challenge for our fifth level characters. And we can't just do that by having more of them. We have to give them better gear than our basic one half CR orc. So um, let's give it. So yeah, let's give him a chain shirt, which is going to be thirteen plus dex mod. It's dex mod's one, so it's going to be fourteen. <coughs> oh, we missed. The Warlock. Derp. Okay. Uh, let's just take this guy's stat block and shift him around a bit. This guy can't be as big as that guy, obviously. So I'm uh, going to give him a 15. That's going to lower his spellcasting capability right there. Uh, I think I'm also going to drop his strength by a point. Uh, that should be fine. Honestly, the, it's probably honestly the Dexcon and Charisma are the ones that are going to matter when you fight this guy. And as much as we are giving them personality, so that they can have witty banter overheard by our rogue and stuff like that, uh, they are going to be massacred by our band of murder hobos, because that's what we're setting them up for. So, Ugi is probably not wearing any armor, because he is a, um, you know, he's a warlock, so I think warlocks don't wear armor. Did, did it look up the quick build here. They're proficient with light armor, so okay. So we can give him light armor then. Let's give him some leather. So 11 plus dex, his dex is nil. Okay. Gronk is the mage's, the mage's bodyguard, and he's going to be walking around wearing pots and pans. Um, I'm thinking a full, suit, a full suit of mail, a full suit of chain. He's got certainly got the strength for it. 
Uh, that will give him an AC of 16. Uh, and uh, wearing chainmail, of course, also uh, confers disadvantage uh, when doing things that uh, require movement and stuff like that, which is important to note. Uh, the captain, <coughs> he's also going to have better armor than everyone else. Uh, but let's give him... <coughs> yeah, the captain, he's a fighter for... Let's give... So... He has some decks, so we don't want to put him in heavy armor if we can avoid it. Um, heavy armor doesn't let you add your dex bonus at all. So let's see if we can get his AC. So let's put him in half plate. Now I'll give him the same AC. But uh, it'll give him the same AC, basically. But it'll look nicer. Uh, I feel like a captain should have plate. Uh, rather than being clanking around. Um, so the half plate combined with his uh, the half plate combined with his higher constitution in this case the half plate plus his higher constitution uh, will make him a tougher opponent whereas this guy the chainmail plus his higher dex which he's not taking advantage of. We are doing this wrong. Why did we give Gronk so high dex? I'm missing something here. What am I missing? Why does Gronk have 14 decks? Is that meant for... Why did we do that? Alright, well, let's uh, put this guy... Let's change this up then. Gronk, since he's got 14 decks for some reason, let's put him in uh, Breastplate. There you go. Er. You know what? He's going to be really heavily armored. I'm going to put him in half plate, and that will give him a 17 AC. Still not too big a challenge for 5th uh, level characters to crack, but he'll stand up a bit better. Uh, and Porton, I'm going to put in uh, Splint, I feel like. No, wait. So Porton's going to be in a big fight. We want him to actually be a bit softer. So I'm going to put him in half plate after all. So he's going to be 16 in half plate. We're carefully, we're trying to balance these encounters a bit, right? So it requires a bit of uh, finesse, shall we say, to balance this out. Um, we talked about him having a better weapon, too. Let's look briefly at the weapon section. I'm nearly out of time for this evening. Uh, let's see. So the captain is going to have a big, fearsome... <coughs> he already wades into battle with a... a uh, I don't know, he's part of a really big encounter. How big do you want to make him? Let's say he's got a battle axe and the rest of the guys... Uh, have swords, maybe we'll do that. I don't know, I feel... I feel like he's already got some good differentiating characteristics. So yeah, we're going to give him a battle. Give I know, we'll give him a sword and the rest of the guys have axes. That makes more sense. So let's give him a long sword. Um... Uh, uh, I don't have his proficiency bonus and stuff like that handy, but, uh, so he's gonna have a long sword. The rest of the guys are gonna have, a the rest of the fighters at least are gonna have axes. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. 
Okay, it is nearly 10 o'clock, so I should be wrapping this up now. Obviously, there's a lot more to go if you want to populate this entire dungeon full of orcs. Uh, I will finish this spreadsheet before I publish the... Uh, I will finish the spreadsheet and publish the map on my blog, um, which again is linked under the video if you're watching on Twitch or in the description... or will be linked in the description uh, on YouTube when this goes up on YouTube. Uh, Although if you're yeah if you're watching this right now obviously there's nothing there just yet but that will be where to look for to find this stuff. So that's it for tonight. Um, as I stated, all this is uh, Creative Commons. You can go ahead and use it if you want to. As once it's uploaded, uh, I encourage you to uh, follow me on Twitch if you're not already, or leave a like on YouTube so I know that uh, you guys are enjoying this stuff. Uh, Next week, we will be doing the second uh, edition of the, monster ch of the Monster Art Challenge. So going back a couple weeks, I took a piece of uh, artwork that a friend of mine had made and made a stat block for it. And so uh, I talked to him and we agreed we're going to make this a regular occurrence. So uh, Monster Making 2 is going to happen next week. I will take a piece of artwork from Line Arts Gallery. And uh, you can see it there, C. Hillier 17 on DeviantArt. I'm going to take a piece of his artwork and I'll make a stat block for it uh, in Pathfinder, though. That's going to be Pathfinder, not uh, D&D, because I don't have a DMG yet for DMD to make stat blocks. Um, so making a Pathfinder stat block. Uh, I'll stick around after the stream ends in chat if people want to ask me any questions. But other than that, have a good night.